Hi everyone, my name is Yi Han Li. I'm an undergraduate student in the University of Nottingham, Ningbo, China. Today I will deliver a speech based on my paper titled The Marital Decision of Chinese Females in the 21st Century Based on Behavioral Economics. Nowadays, the topic of women's rights has resulted in hated discussion all over the world. The freedom and liberation of female reflects the civilization level of a society. One essential topic of that is marriage, which reflects the development of not only human society, but the form of social norms and the desire of individuals. First of all, let me briefly introduce the background of marriage situations from two dimensions. From the horizontal dimension, the matrimony policy of different countries is a reflection of their cultural concepts and population situations. In most developed countries with low birth rates, marriage policy often shows the encouragement of procreation. For instance, the legal marriage age is generally from 16 to 18, and extra bonus are provided in some countries for families with more than one child. However, in countries with large population base and insufficient resources, the policy shows advocacy of limits and control. For example, in China, the legal age to marry is four years later for both genders. Meanwhile, the law of birth control was implemented for more than 30 years, stipulating that each Chinese family can only have one child. As for vertical dimension, we can see that the rational marriage trend in China also varies with times. In the past, females are prone to marry at an early age, while in the 21st century, the marital choices become diverse and rational, which is more specifically reflected on the trend of late marriage, higher divorce rate, and lower fertility intention. Have you thought about the drivers of marriage trend at different times? What objective factors are affecting your marital options? Have you heard of anyone making irrational marital decisions in their lives? Well, all these questions will be explained. My presentation will focus on the marital decision of Chinese females. Firstly, apply the framework of neoclassical economics to analyze reasons for the variation in rational marital trend, containing the insurance system, the trade-off between cost and benefit, and the social efficiency. Then discuss relevant irrational behaviors from the aspect of behavioral economics, in which the recency effects, social negative reinforcement, and regret aversion are included. Finally, discuss proper recommendations and expectations from the perspective of both the society and the individuals. First of all, let me talk about the marriage trend variation and discuss reasons for such changes in economic framework. The first perspective is insurance system. In the past, females were especially dependent on marriage relations because they were constrained by low economic status and income level, which can be ascribed to a far-reaching influence of social division flavor in a federal period. Under this circumstance, one important purpose of concluding a marriage is to establish a stable insurance mechanism in which partners share risks and benefits jointly. However, as the social welfare system becomes increasingly comprehensive in the 21st century, the financial security provided by savings of spouses begins to demonstrate a diminishing marginal utility. Also, the progress of women provides them with more opportunities. A rising number of females started to enter the workplace and assume significant positions, which consequently enhanced their income level and risk-bearing capacity. Therefore, Chinese females become less dependent on marriage, and it is no longer a barrier for ladies to enjoy welfare if they prefer late marriage or even no marriage. Now, it comes to another perspective, that is the trade-off between costs and benefits. An important benefit of marriage in the past was reducing the average living cost. The establishment of a multi-member family can enhance the utilization rate of common resources for a family, such as residence and furniture. 
by apportioning total fixed cost of house and decoration. Therefore, the per capita cost of living in a multi-member family is generally lower than that of living alone under the same conditions and standards. However, as the development of the economy, the balance of the trade-off is broken because of the increasing family cost in China. For example, with the large population density and the insufficient supply of education resources, the cost of raising and educating a child soars compared with that in the past, which on average occupies about 50% of parents' total income. For a large number of Chinese females, another reason for the trend of late marriage and late procreation is the higher opportunity cost. In traditional Chinese society, the opportunity cost of early marriage is relatively low because it was the most important nation for almost all women to marry and procreate, meaning that they don't need to give up any alternative benefits at the cost. However, there is a substantial increase in the opportunity costs for Chinese females in the 21st century, which can be ascribed to a variety of options and goals, as well as higher return of self-investment. A large number of marriageable ladies are prone to concentrate on personal development instead of devoting time in managing domestic affairs. This leads to a decrease in fertility intention and strengthens the tendency towards late procreation. Social efficiency is another important consideration for the variation of marriage trend. To enhance the social efficiency by fully exploiting human resources, the pattern of labor deviation in which men worked outside while women stay at home dominated the traditional Chinese family. This was decided by the previous industrial structure, traditional social concepts, as well as the limitation of females in terms of the social positions and economic capacity. However, the efficiency division of labor is changed in the 21st century along with the transformation of economic structure and job requirements. Research shows that in all this market of human resources, the marginal return of male's physical strength diminishes in several industries, while the skill of resource integration that females are talented at is creating remarkable marginal benefit in various nascent industries and positions. This means that the previous Pareto equilibrium is no longer an optimal solution. More and more Chinese females enter workplaces and create outstanding values, which consequently leads to late marriage and procreation tendency. In the both discussion, the framework of neoclassical economics is applied for analyzing the marriage trend and the relevant reasons, but in fact, not all phenomena can be completely explained by the so-called rational tendency. In the following part, I will apply the framework of behavior economics to explain several psychological effects and biases that lead to irrational behaviors. The recency effect is a concept meaning that memories for recent events and stimuli are clearer and deeper and the latest information will significantly affect people's attitudes and decisions. Nowadays, the willingness to marry and procreate of Chinese women is significantly decreased. More and more females are prone to break shackles of marriage to pursue their freedom and personality. As a result, males are likely to be passively affected and the social public opinion may also face the pressure of guiding women to improve their enthusiasm for marriage and childbearing. Thus, the topic of marriage is likely to become a social concern and arouse an extensive discussion on the internet. A large amount of recent information that may produce marriage anxiety is over-publicized on social platforms. For instance, plights of elder women in marriage market, and the danger of late procreation. Chinese females are exposed to a stressful environment full of recency information related to anxiety and worries, which may result in irrational behaviors lacking considerations. 
Another explanation is from the aspect of sociology and normative beliefs, that is social negative reinforcement, meaning that the social criticism and blame of certain behaviors can weaken, eliminate, and rectify those actions with the pressure of public opinions and social evaluations. With the influence of residual thoughts and stereotypes arising in Chinese federal society, a considerable number of Chinese citizens hold the opinion that it is the obligation of virtuous wives to maintain family harmony, and it is immoral for women to abandon family or marriage relationship. Such comments reflect that women deciding to divorce are likely to burden with the pressure from social moral condemnation. Which may consequently strengthen their self-reproach and sense of discomfort, and hinder them from decisive and rational choices in the face of unsatisfactory marriage. Now, I'd like to mention an emotional bias named the regret aversion, referring to the strong desire to evade regret. Researchers found that individuals are likely to be prudent. Indecisive and may even behave irrationally in the face of risky options to avoid the exposed remorse. When deciding with unhealthy marriage relationship, even the young generation tend to evade potential risks. They know that once resolving to divorce, they will probably be regretful for huge divorce costs and emotional losses. Therefore, a large number of Chinese couples, especially females, would rather endure and compromise an unsatisfactory marriage than decide to divorce. One thing worth mentioning is that women actually burden higher barriers than men in terms of both exiting from the marriage market and entering the remarriage market, which can be ascribed to the higher depreciation rate and more considerable costs of time. Such high divorce costs and possible losses are likely to result in strong resistance to divorce, and may impede the rational behaviors of Chinese females in the long term, even if this option is conductive to stop loss and self-belay. Now it comes to the final section, in which relevant recommendations will be put forward to overcome the marriage anxiety and its current social problems. Firstly, from the perspective of policy, Chinese government should extend maternity leave for females and paternity leave for males to cultivate and require males to shoulder more family responsibilities. Here, the data demonstrate a problem in China. That is, the duration of maternity leave is only about twenty percent of that in Denmark. Although it's resulted from differences in culture and pace of development, time spent with spouses and children is extremely necessary for family and marriage relation, regardless of countries and cultures. Additionally, Chinese government should improve social welfare for single mothers, for instance, providing them with higher salary, financial subsidies in healthcare and education of children. In this way, the anxiety of divorced ladies and single mothers can be effectively alleviated. Apart from policy approaches, another perspective is media publicity. Media is a window to express orientation, value, and ideology of a society. In fact, a large number of marriage anxieties of Chinese women are closely related to the over discussion and biased reports of social media. Therefore, the social media are expected to be responsible for reporting news comprehensively and objectively, to reduce the over discussion of topics leading to female anxiety, and to supervise news that embodies the female ideology of male superiority and the female inferiority. In this way, a more objective information environment will be created. In the 21st century, Chinese females are facing multiple pressure, including the family affairs, work, and competition. Their marriage anxiety actually puts forward higher requirements and expectations for males. On the one hand, Chinese men in the 21st century should realize that the most required factors of marriage are not wealth and income anymore, but the share, understanding, respect, and responsibility. 
On the other hand, contemporary Chinese females should carefully reflect their real desires, recognize their social values, as well as cultivating the quality and ability of self-esteem, self-confidence, and self-love, and to develop their capacity of information screening, perception, and judgment, to ponder on marital issues in a more rational way that best confirm to themselves. It is strongly hoped that a more comprehensive regulation system can be established to protect the rights and benefits of single mothers and divorced females. It is also expected that there will be a substantial reduction in gender discrimination and stereotype with the formation of equal gender awareness in China. Hopefully, a rational marriage trend suitable for China's national condition and dynamic development can be achieved by jointly efforts of all social sectors, including legislature, the government, educational industry, media, and individuals. Here are references used in my presentation. This is the end of my presentation. Please contact me if you're interested in my research. Thanks for listening. Bye.